My name is Yafit Becha, and I'm a product manager with Google Play. And I'm Alessandro. I'm a software engineer in Google Play. Today, we are going to be talking about Play Asset Delivery. Two years ago, we introduced the Android App Bundle, a new publishing format that allows us to help you optimize your app delivery. Apps have seen great success with the App Bundle, but games, and especially high-quality ones, have different delivery challenges, which so far haven't been met by the App Bundle. One of the ways games are different from apps is that games require a large amount of graphic assets. And oftentimes, the current size limitation of 150 megabytes is simply not enough. Some of you are using APK expansion files, also known as OBB files, despite their many downsides. And we know that many of you are using CDNs to host and deliver your game resources from. This results in a suboptimal user experience. User install and open the game just to be faced with the long progress bar, waiting for additional resources to be downloaded. Another major downside of using a CDN is that your users can't rely on auto updates. So again, your users need to wait, this time for updating resources. Lastly, CDNs aren't free. So this way of delivering game assets also involves extra cost that needs to be accounted for. To address the unique needs and challenges that are typical for high quality games, we are announcing today a new set of delivery features suited for games. This new product is called Play Asset Delivery, or in short, PAD. It offers free, dynamic delivery of all your game assets. In today's talk, we'll cover the four aspects of Play Asset Delivery. The publishing format, which extends the app bundle and lets you publish a single artifact to play, including all the resources your game needs. Delivery mode, that lets you control when and how Play delivers your game assets. Auto updates, that takes care of keeping your game assets up to date. And texture compression format targeting, which help you serve optimal performance assets to the requesting device. We'll then talk about integration and testing of Play Asset Delivery, touching on the game engine integration and our testing solutions. Let's start by talking about the publishing format and how you can package your game assets in order to use Play Asset Delivery. Play Asset Delivery is built on top of the Android App Bundle, which many of you are probably already familiar with. With the App Bundle, you can publish a single artifact to play containing all the code and resources that your game needs. The App Bundle is now Play's recommended publishing format. It's been around for about two years, and 40% of all top apps and games are now using it. It is a modern format that replaces the traditional monolithic APK at publishing time. The App Bundle allows developers to package all the languages, screen densities, and device architectures into one single artifact. A bundle is not installable directly. Instead, Play takes care of generating multiple APKs optimized for each requesting device, all from the single bundle that you published. We have extended the bundle format to include a new delivery construct for games called Asset Packs. An Asset Pack is a container of assets, no code, and it can be very large. You can add all types of assets into your Asset Packs, from graphical textures to meshes, shaders, multimedia files, etc. Asset Packs are packaged in the app bundle together with your binary so you can publish one single artifact to play containing everything that your game needs. Now that we saw how game assets are packaged with Play Asset Delivery, let's see how your assets are actually being delivered. Play Asset Delivery includes flexible delivery modes, which puts you in control of how your game is being delivered, as it's you who know your game and users best. With Play Asset Delivery, you can choose when to have your asset packs delivered. It can be either as part of the initial install, on demand throughout the game lifecycle, or shortly after game installation. Let's dive into the different delivery options and see how our early adopters have been using them so far. The first delivery mode is install time. With install time delivery, you can deliver up to one gigabyte of game asset as part of the initial game installation. This would behave just like a large APK. No need for expansion files, or special API calls. Just package your assets in the new app bundle for games and publish to play. Illusion Lab is a Swedish indie mobile game studio with high focus on graphics and physics. They have their own C++-based in-house game engine, and their TouchGrind series is one of their most successful titles with over 10 million users. 
TouchGrind BMX2 is a bit over 400 megabytes. To go beyond the 150 megabyte upsize limitation, they had been using APK expansion files. Back in November, they integrated pads installed time delivery. The integration took only one day and another two to three days for code cleanup. When pushing the new release to production, they saw great stability improvement. The crash rate reduced from 2.5 to 0.75%. Overall, Illusion Lab reports better download performance, fewer errors, and a more streamlined publishing process. Next, with on-demand delivery mode, PAD also allows you to have your asset packs delivered upon request, only when you need them. With on-demand mode, asset packs served this way are delivered as raw files and placed in your game's internal storage, so you can access them directly using file system calls. The US-based developer RV App Studios has over 200 million downloads across their portfolio of casual games, educational kids apps, and utility apps. Some of those apps are instant games. For those of you who aren't familiar with instant games, these are games that are served by play, but not actually get installed right from the start. Instead, the user can click the Try Now button on the Play Store and can start playing immediately. To enable this experience, instant games are limited to 10 megabytes. RV App Studios are using on-demand to deliver assets for their Pastry Pop Last instant game. They deliver just over five megabytes of assets right after the instant game launches, which lets them stay under the 10 megabyte limit while still deliver a high quality experience. Lastly, fast follow delivery mode is probably the most interesting one. With fast follow, you can have play deliver your asset packs immediately after the initial installation complete, and while the open button on the Play Store is already enabled. This lets you minimize the time for first interaction, letting your users into the game sooner while initiating the additional download independently from when the user opened the app. This way, you get the best of both worlds, because so many times, by the time the user opens the app, a lot, if not all of the assets, have already finished downloading. Like with on-demand mode, fast follow asset packs are delivered as raw files and placed in your game's internal storage, so you can access them directly using file system calls. Gameloft, one of our early adopters was established in 2000 and now has over 4,600 employees and 19 studios throughout the world. They have a portfolio of over 190 games with some franchises that span several years. One of them is Asphalt 8. Gameloft has tested Asphalt 8 with Play Asset Delivery, migrating from using your CDN for secondary downloads to using Fast Follow Delivery mode. Asphalt 8 has a mini game that keeps the user engaged while game resources are being downloaded in the background. With fast follow delivery, they are seeing significant increase in the number of users that completes the secondary download and get to start playing the real game. This results in better user retention, improving installs versus users' KPI. Before we switch gears to talk about updates, I want to emphasize one thing that we tend to take for granted when it comes to play delivery and that's the global scale and coverage Google Play has. For a game like Call of Duty Mobile, being able to provide top performance across the world is critical. This is especially challenging on emerging markets and required complex CDN setup for different areas in the world. Call of Duty Mobile is one of our early testers. They're very excited about Play Asset Delivery and are now in the process of applying it with their game. So far, we have talked about how you can control the initial delivery of your assets to your user's device. Now, let's see how Play Asset Delivery helps you keep your assets up to date. Play Asset Delivery lets you rely on Play to take care of updating your assets just like it does with your game binary. With Play Auto Updates, the entire game gets updated, including all assets. When your users open the game, they will already have the freshest binary and assets and they won't need to wait for the resources to get downloaded. Play also takes care of Delta patching for you. It will only deliver the bytes that actually changed from the version that the user currently has on their device. This minimizes the download size and the update time. If you really need to keep all your users on the latest version of the game, you will probably want to handle cases when the user opens the game before it has, has a chance to update. In order to do that, you can use our in-app updates API. The in-app updates API lets you trigger the update directly from the game, 
without risking any user drop-off by having users go to the store to get their update. You can decide when to trigger the update flow from within the game itself, and the users are kept in a managed flow until the update finishes. We launched the in-app updates for apps last year at Google I.O., and we are now adding supports for games. The in-app updates API in the Play Unity plugin allows you to call for an update directly from your Unity game. And we will soon add support for this API in the Play Core native SDK as well for native game developers. If you would like to join our beta program for in-app updates, please apply at the link that you can see on the screen. Now that we've covered Play Asset Delivery core features, let's talk about asset targeting and see how you can rely on Play not only for getting your assets to users, but also for serving the optimal assets to each device. With Play Asset Delivery, we started building towards our vision of tailored delivery that optimizes all aspects of your game serving, from which parts of the game to serve, to whom, and when. With this, beyond just letting you have control over when to deliver assets, we want to help you serve the optimal set of assets to each device. The first step in this direction is texture compression format targeting. As you know, there are different algorithms for texture compression, and the more advanced ones are only supported on newer devices. Ideally, you would want to serve the most advanced format supported by the device, but doing so introduces additional complexity that most games prefer to avoid. Instead, you have to make a hard compromise. Either choose a less efficient format that is supported by most devices, or choose the most efficient format, but exclude many devices that don't support it. Play Asset Delivery let you achieve the best of both worlds and serve optimal efficiency texture formats while still having maximum reach. With Play Asset Delivery, you can package multiple texture compression formats and rely on Play to serve only the assets that are optimal to the requesting device. This way, you don't need to compromise on using suboptimal compression formats, and you can have your users always get the best asset suitable for their device no wasted bandwidth or suboptimal loading performance. To join our beta program for texture compression format targeting, apply at the link you see at the top. Let's now talk about the integration of Play Asset Delivery into your game. The first step is to organize your game assets into asset packs. Asset packs are simply containers that include only assets and a manifest file, but no executable code. In the manifest, you will set the delivery mode to be either install time Fast follow or on demand, so that Play will know when to deliver the asset pack. In order to call for assets to be downloaded on demand and to check the delivery status of your pack, you will need to use the PlayCore SDK. The PlayCore SDK is a Play library that serves as an interface between your game and Play's distribution stack. The final step is to build your game binary and assets and choose the Android app bundle as your output format. Now, many of you are probably thinking, well, this sounds great, but I'm using a game engine that doesn't support this feature, so how can I possibly use any of this? Well, the good news is that we have taken this into account. Play Asset Delivery comes with support for many different integration services, so you will not need to add any code to your publishing pipeline scripts to build your app bundle using Bundle Tool, and you don't need to find ways to integrate with a Java API in your game code. We wanted to make it very simple for you to use Play Asset Delivery straight away, regardless of the game engine that you're using. So let's look at Play Asset Delivery integration for a few different environments. If you're using the Unity engine, we have built a Unity plugin that takes care of packaging your Unity asset bundles into asset packs and lets you build an app bundle that includes them. At runtime, the plugin wraps the PlayCore SDK so that you can use C -sharp functions in your Unity game with no need for complex JNI glue code. The plugin is now available in our package registry and is compatible with Unity 2017.4 and higher. For Unreal Engine, we are happy to announce that the upcoming Unreal version will support building up bundles with asset packs. Version 4.25 will no longer use APK expansion files and it will instead package your assets using install time delivery. If the total size of your assets is greater than one gigabyte, you can choose to serve the rest using fast follow or on-demand delivery modes. To get your additional resources delivered on demand and for checking the status of a fast follow delivery, you will be able to use a provided blueprint that performs interaction with the PlayCore SDK. If you're using any other engines, 
you're still probably using Gradle internally to build your Android game. The upcoming Gradle 4.0, which will go stable in April, will let you build an app bundle combining your asset packs and your binary into one single artifact. You will not need to call Bundle Tool directly. You just need to update your Gradle version and configure the delivery mode in the build.gradle file for each individual asset pack. You can then use the native version of the Playcore SDK to handle fast follow and on-demand delivery modes in your code. Now that you see that you can did use Play Asset Delivery, no matter which game engine you're using, you're probably wondering about testing. Clearly, before adopting Pad and releasing a new version that uses it, you will want to validate that everything works as expected and your game functions correctly. Early in the integration process, you probably want to test locally and validate the game interaction with Play Core API. To do that, you can build the app in local testing mode using Bundle Tool. An app built with local testing mode will look for asset packs in a predefined local directory and simulate the download of the files as if they're originating from Play servers. As you get closer to having a release candidate, you will probably want to test your game as realistically as possible to make sure your game will perform great for your users in the wild. To validate this, you can upload your test build to play using internal app sharing and get a shareable link your testers can use to download the game from. So let's recap what Play Asset Delivery can help you with. You can publish a single artifact to play, including all the resources your game needs. You have control over when and how Play delivers your game assets. You can rely on Play to take care of keeping your game assets up to date. And you can deliver assets of optimal texture compression format to the requesting device. All of this is now generally available to you for free. The total download size allowed per version is 2 gigabyte. You can use it to deliver your assets using install time, fast follow, or on demand. To make sure you and your users are getting the best performance, install time delivery is limited to 1 gigabyte, and each individual asset pack can be up to 500 megabyte. Other than that, you can use the 2 gigabyte however you choose. We hope that this presentation demonstrated our commitment to helping you serve your entire game through play, and that we are doubling down on our vision of customized dynamic delivery. Play Asset Delivery with the new app bundle format for games. Its three delivery modes, updates, and patching are generally available, and you can find documentation at developer.adri.com that will walk you through the integration process depending on the game engine you use. If you are interested in trying out our new in-app updates for games or texture compression format targeting, join our early access program at this link.